Welcome to section 4.3 and 4.4. So in 4.3, we're going to discuss chromosomes. That's these guys that you typically see as X's. Uh, they're not always going to be that way, but we'll discuss it. That's a common way of seeing it. And then we'll discuss what goes on with those chromosomes specifically during mitosis. So the process of actual dividing up your DNA and going through cell division. So to begin with, chromosomes. This is a flashback. We've discussed this before. It's made up of DNA. That's the important part. But that DNA is wrapped around proteins. And so it's not just DNA. So when you look at something, when you look at DNA that's just kind of sitting around in a cell, its natural form is going to be called chromatin. That's just when you see this DNA that's wrapped loosely around these proteins. Now, in the case of when you want to move the DNA, it's not cool to take like a whole bunch of just piled up DNA and try to somehow drag it around successfully. So what we do instead is we wrap it more tightly around these proteins and we kind of wrap the proteins around each other to make this really, really compact, condensed mass of DNA and proteins. That is what a chromosome is. And so this is only going to be during the process of cell division that you will see a chromosome for normal purposes. Because when it's a chromosome, it's so tightly packed that you cannot use it to do normal functions. You're not going to typically be doing transcription, translation. So you're going to briefly move it, divide the cell, and then let it go back to being chromatin. This is our default, is chromatin. You know, 90-some percent of the time, it's going to be chromatin. So just keep that in mind. We'll talk about chromosomes a lot, but that's not the default state of DNA. That's chromatin. Now, when you look at a chromosome, first of all, it's going to be defined by the center piece. All right? There's going to be this kind of really dense middle region, this, this waste, as they sometimes call it. That's the centromere. Now, I want you guys to realize, anytime you see a centromere, that will be called a chromosome. So this right here, as a whole, is going to be one chromosome. And I know this is going to seem weird, but let me explain coming up. Now, technically, this chromosome is con consists of two chromatids called sister chromatids. So this is the first chromatid. This is the second chromatid. Now, you might wonder why that matters. These are exact copies. So essentially, the guy on the left is one full what was previously a chromosome. And then the second one is essentially going to be a copy of that original chromosome. So we can just say this one will be the original. And then we did DNA replication, and we made a copy. So this is the copy of that original chromosome. So even though it has two things that previously by themselves could have been a chromosome, because they're attached, it's one chromosome. Now, as soon as we split this attachment, if we go through and break this apart, which we will during mitosis, each of these will become its own chromosome at that point. So if you see an X, that's one chromosome. If it splits, so now we've got two of these, this is two chromosomes. Even though before, the exact same structure when it was attached was considered one chromosome, it's now two as soon as we split it. So that's why sometimes it'll be weird. Well, we'll say something like we lined up the chromosomes, 46 chromosomes, and then they split and we now have 92 chromosomes. That's because when they split, we still consider each part a full chromosome. Each chromosome will have many genes on it. This can range from, you know, dozens up to thousands. It just depends on how big the chromosome is. And in humans, we've said we have 46 per normal cell, body cell, somatic cell, if you want to get our terminology. And when we look at these, they're arranged and named with a number by size. So chromosome 1 is the biggest you can see here. And you'll see chromosome 22 is the smallest. And then the last one will be our sex chromosomes. This one's a female, so it's two X's. If this was a male, there would be one of these X's gone, and in its place, you'd have a small Y chromosome instead. So that just kind of shows you how we organize our stuff. Now, in mitosis, the whole goal of mitosis is to take one nuclei, or one nucleus, we should say, and make it into two. This is in preparation for actually splitting the cell. To do that, we have to have two identical sets of DNA, which are obviously stored in a nucleus in the eukaryotic cells that do this. Now, because during mitosis with eukaryotes, there's more chromosomes involved, we are going to have a more complex process. And instead of just like sticking the chromosomes to cell membrane, we're going to actually go through and we're going to have these spindle fibers. These are going to be like the uh, stuff we talked about in the cytoskeleton chapter. 
these are going to be proteins that are able to span the cell, grab hold of things, and ultimately tug them to one side of the cell. Uh, they're specifically called microtubules, but we're normally just going to call them spindle fibers is good enough for me. But if you want to remember back, these are the guys that they called microtubules. They were the biggest part of the cytoskeleton. So these spindle fibers are the guys that allow us to be accurate. They're the guys that allow us to attach to, grab, and safely pull apart those chromosomes. So one copy, because remember that we said that this X is essentially just two copies, copy one, copy two. So it allows for us to separate these. Copy one can go that way, and copy two can go this way. So each cell gets its own identical copy. This is what those spindle fibers will allow. This is why it's more complex than binary fission. You know, it has to be to let this hall work. Now, with mitosis, there's going to be four phases during the actual part that's called mitosis. We already talked about interphase with G1, S, G2. But after we're done with G2, you're first going to hit prophase. Now, I'm not going to make you memorize exactly what's going on with these. I'm going to, just for the sake of your own brains, give you a real quick overview. I will want you to know about metaphase, though. That's why I've written it down. But in prophase, this is pretty much just prep. So this is the one where we condense the chromatin down to actually be chromosomes. This is where we break up the nucleus so we can actually move the chromosomes. We form the spindle fibers. This is the prep. Now, metaphase is when we have these chromosomes attached to the spindle fibers and we line them up in the middle so that we were ready to split them and allow them to go to either side to make sure we accurately divide our DNA. This is also where that checkpoint was, so that's why I give metaphase a little bit of special attention because this is a phase that we tend to talk about more than most of the others. In anaphase, this is just going to be where we actually split the chromosomes. So this is the part where we go from the X that's attached to just being two separate pieces. So we go from what are called the sister chromatids to just being their own separate chromosomes. And then lastly, telophase is where everybody tries to go back to being normal. So you reform the nucleus, your chromosomes go back to being chromatin, and we kind of pretend nothing happened other than the fact there are two nuclei now instead of just one. Now at this point though, if we finish this process, we would have one cell with two nuclei in it. It's the next process, cytokinesis, where we actually go through and we split these two nuclei that you can see. So this is essentially us sitting at telophase. And so during telophase, and sometimes even during part of anaphase, we can start to divide the cytoplasm, divide the cell into two. And that's going to be cytokinesis. And there's two ways to do it, and these are actually going to be pretty obvious. Cleavage, I'm sure you guys all know about. We call cells that lack a cell wall, so these are typically going to be animal cells because they have no cell wall. That's the key thing. So cell wall, we'll circle it and put an X, no cell wall. So these guys can actually just pinch apart the cell. So they'll just kind of squeeze it down until eventually it touches and it pulls away as two cells. When they're doing that, you have what's called a cleavage furrow. And so it makes your cells look like they're cleavage. You shouldn't forget this. You're teenagers. And then the cell plate is if you have something that has a cell wall. So this will typically be things like plant cells. And so these guys will ultimately go through and they will just build a cell wall and the appropriate membrane down the middle. And so what we're going to get is this barrier. So now we've got two cells, but we didn't pinch them apart. We just said, all right, you know what? We're just going to put something smack dab in the middle, and now we're set.